As the Allied bombing campaign against Germany grew in ferocity and intensity, the Germans designed a series of cutting-edge aircraft in a desperate attempt to halt the aerial onslaught. New jet and rocket aircraft like the Messerschmitt Me262, the Heinkel HE162 and the Messerschmitt Me163 Comet were all potentially excellent platforms. But they were either not used properly in the role they were best suited for, as with Hitler's decision to use the Me262 as a fighter bomber, or entered service too late and in too few numbers to have any impact on the American bomber streams, like the Heinkel 162 and Messerschmitt 163. In fact, one of the problems that the Luftwaffe faced was a plethora of competing designs from competing companies, which saw the effort dispersed over many different new aircraft types, most of which only existed as prototypes before the surrender. But the dire need for a design to hold the B-17s did lead to some extremely radical new weapons, including one of the maddest of the lot, the Buck M-349 Natter or Grass Snake. As well as jet and rocket aircraft, the Germans also led the world in the development of surface-to-air missiles, but primitive guidance systems led them to marry missile technology to a human-controlled machine. Because of extreme shortages of strategic materials, in common with other fighter emergency program aircraft, the Natter was largely constructed of wood, nailed and glued together. It was not a suicide aircraft, though extremely dangerous to operate, some safety features were built into the design, including an armoured bulkhead and bulletproof glass cockpit windscreen. The SS took over the project in December 1944, under the auspices of SS General Hans Kammler, who also supervised the V-2 missile programme, amongst other projects. The Nata was simple to construct. It had no landing gear. Parts of the aircraft were designed to be reused after an attack. The aircraft was also very small, making it hard for American defensive gunners to hit as it attacked the bomber stream. It was 6 metres, or just over 19 feet long, with a wingspan of 4 metres, or slightly over 13 feet. Its gross weight, with solid fuel rocket boosters, was 1,769 kilos, or just under 4,000 pounds. Its power plant was a Valter HWK109509 C1 bi-fuel rocket motor, and four Schmidding SG-34 solid-fuel booster rockets. Performance figures were impressive. A maximum speed of 1,000 km per hour, or 621 miles per hour, at 5,000 meters, or just over 16,500 feet. Flight time was anywhere between 3 and a quarter and 4 and a half minutes, depending on altitude, and it had a service ceiling of 12,000 meters, or 39,000 feet, that is 7.5 miles, taking 62 seconds to reach this height. The Natter was launched vertically, flying up and through the bomber stream. The fuel exhausted, the Natter, now under human control, would dive back at the bombers, firing a spread of explosive rockets from its cellular nose. The pilot would then guide the aircraft to around 3,000 meters, or about 10,000 feet, level off, release the aircraft's detachable nose and a small braking parachute from the rear fuselage. The deceleration would throw the pilot clear, and he would release his personal parachute. The Valter engine would descend to earth under its own parachute, so it could be reused, while the cheap wooden airframe would be destroyed. The first prototype was completed in October 1944, shortly before the SS took over. Several unpowered towing tests of manned glider versions of the Natter were performed. On the 14th of February 1945, test pilot Hans Zubert made a daring cable-free gliding test, confirming that the Natter was an excellent aircraft. The next phase was vertical takeoff tests. These were unmanned off a launch tower, powered only by the booster rockets. Up to the 1st of March 1945, 16 prototypes were used, 8 in gliding tests and 8 for vertical takeoff. The decision was then taken to make a manned test launch. The first attempt actually used a dummy pilot, and the dummy successfully exited the Natter by parachute. A young volunteer Luftwaffe pilot, Lothar Sieber, was next used on the 1st of March 1945, this time in a fully fueled Natter. 
Zeba had an intercom system to talk to the scientists on the ground. The Falter engine was brought up to full thrust, then Zeba ignited the boosters. The camouflage natter rose off the tower to a height of about 150 meters or 500 feet before it suddenly pitched up into an inverted course. At about 500 meters or 5,000 feet, the cockpit canopy came off. The aircraft continued to climb for 15 seconds, then nosedived into the ground, resulting in a tremendous explosion a few kilometers from the launch site. It is believed that Zebra was killed by a faulty cockpit canopy latch, which might not have been properly closed on takeoff. When the canopy came off, the violence of this action probably broke Zebra's neck, or at least rendered him unconscious, and he involuntarily pulled on the control column, causing the plane to crash. More pilots came forward and volunteered, and a further two, perhaps three, manned launches were successfully conducted and it was decided that the Natter should be tested in combat. Preparations were made for ten fully armed aircraft to be readied at Kirchheim, near Stuttgart. The operational A-1 Natters were called Car Maschinen and formed part of Krokus Einsatz, or Operation Krokus, so named because the Krokus flower blooms in March. By April 1945, Bachem had produced 14 completed and armed natters for Krokus Einsatz operations. Special concrete launch pads were established in a wood called Hasenholz, just south of the Stuttgart to Munich Autobahn and east of Nabern Untertek. These were the bases for the simple tree trunk launching poles. Three were built in a triangular arrangement. Pilot training began in March 1945, when eight highly decorated and experienced pilots arrived at Lager Hemberg in Baden-Württemberg. By early April, they moved to the Hasenholz area ready to launch. The unit name was Air Probungskommando 600, formed on the 1st of April 1945. It was decided to launch the first three Natters at an American bomber stream on Hitler's birthday, 20th of April 1945. But the progress of Allied ground forces negated this plan. Both the Natter production facility at Waldsee and the EK-600 unit in the woods at Hasenholz face capture. On the 20th of April, the day of the first operation, tanks of the US 10th Armored Division captured Kirchheim unter Teck near Hasenholz. EK-600 hastily loaded its natters onto special trailers and relocated to Waldsee. But only five days later, Waldsee would fall to advancing French forces. Just before French troops arrived on the 25th of April, five Natter A1s on trailers left, heading for Austria and the Alps. At Bad Würdischhofen, the group waited for another detachment with one Natter retreating from Nabern Untertek. The Natters all ended up abandoned in Austria at the end of the war. US forces found two burned Natters at Camp Schlatt on the River Inn at Urztal in Austria on the 4th of May 1945. On the 5th, US forces captured intact four more Natters at St. Leonhard in Pitztal sitting on trailers in an alpine meadow. Four others had been burned by the Germans at Waldsee before retreating. One natter was captured intact by the Soviets in a factory in eastern Germany. Of the total of 36 natters of all types built, including test models, only one survives intact today. It is at the Paul E. Garber Preservation, Restoration and Storage Facility in Maryland, the United States, owned by the Smithsonian. A replica natter of the Deutsches Museum in Munich is said to have been constructed partly from original natter sub-assemblies that survived the war. All other natters in museums are modern reproductions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.